Now let's start documenting this project by creating sections and elevations. And to do that, I'm going to minimize here the design tools. Let's keep the documenting tools open and let's go to the section tool. So before we start editing a section, I'm just going to go ahead and create one. So I'm going to choose the first point and the final point of the section. And you can just click on the side that you want to look at. So I'm going to look at this side head and click here. And there we have section that is called now S04. And if you go here to your navigator under the sections, you should have this S04 building section here. So let's double click on it. Let's see how it looks. It doesn't look really good yet, but we're going to get there. So let's go back to the floor plan and first change how this section looks in the plan. So I'm going to select this section. Let's keep it a zoom here and press Ctrl T or Command T if you're in a Mac. And here on the section settings dialog, I'm going to go to the first tab on the general where we can change the ID of the section. So I'm going to change it to A and we're going to change the name to section A. You can also change how far the section is going to look at. Right now the section is infinite. You can make it limited. We might have to do that so we don't see all that landscape there. So I'm going to keep it limited. You can also limit the section vertically. We don't want to do that here. So let's go ahead to the next marker. So here we can change the line type of the section. So you could change it to a solid or a dashed. And you can also change from continuous section line to a segmented section line. That means you're going to only see a little bit of line here close to the markers or when you change the orientation of the section. You can also choose the section to have a marker on the middle, but we don't want to do that. We want at the end. And I know some practice, they prefer to have the section marker only in one side. And you do that by checking those boxes here. Before we change the size of the text of the marker symbol, let's first change the symbol itself. So I'm going to minimize this and open the next one. Here in the marker symbol and text, you can choose the style. So we're going to change the style three to style six. And you can also change the text that appears inside this marker. So right now we have the ID of the section and the layout ID, but we don't have any layout yet. So nothing's going to come up, but we're going to leave it this way. And if we go back here, you will realize that the letter doesn't fit inside the marker. So let's make the marker bigger. 12 millimeters should do. And let's go ahead and press OK. So this is already looking better. And you will notice that now the section marker have this symbol here, which represents the limit or how far we are looking at on the section. So I'm going to keep it here. Don't worry, this is not going to get printed only the section marker will. So now let's go here to the project navigator, double click on the sections. And now let's start changing how the model looks in this section. So instead of going on the plan, selecting the section and using control T, I'm going to go here to the tab, right click here and go to section settings. So it's pretty much the same thing as we were doing before in the plan. I want to take a look on this model display where we can change how this model is going to look. Starting in the cut elements where we can change how the fill for the surface looks. So right now we have a uniform surface that is this general gray. So we could choose the cut fill for the object. So we have the original settings of the object. We can also choose the own surface colors, but I will keep uniform surface. But instead of general, let's choose a darker color. I'm going to go for this ivory black because we don't want to show too much details. It's just a schematic design. You can also have a uniform pen for the cut element. So I'm going to activate here and the pen 21 is pretty thick, should do the job. Now going to the uncut elements here, we can choose the fill for the uncut surface. So right now we have a uniform pen color, which is OK. But for instance, you could have their own surface color just for you to see how it looks. I'm going to go press OK here and everything should get the original color. Looks OK, but I don't really want that. So I'm going to go back here to the tab, right click, section settings. 
So instead of on surface color, I'm going to go back to uniform. And right now we have the window background, which is white, but I recommend you to use the transparent. And that's because when you export this section to DWG, you will get less hatches. So let's keep it transparent. You can also have a uniform pen color for the contours. So I'm going to go ahead, tickle that and choose a thinner black. So the pen number one, you can also activate the vectorial 3D hatching, which means every material that has a hatching will come up and also transparency, which we don't really want because I don't want to see those lines here after the window. It just makes it confusing. So I'm going to uncheck this part. And on the sun and shadow settings, I'm going to activate this sun and shadow. So we have a little bit of depth in this drawing, but 50% is a little bit too heavy. So I'm going to make a fill of 25% for the sun shadow. Let's press OK. See how it looks. Yep, that's looking much better. So this hatching for the stone is the vectorial hatching that we have activated before, and it just looks good. I'm going to change here the mesh to not have this earth. So I'm going to go ahead here on top and change it without earth, which is going to look less heavy, but feel free to add to the elements. For instance, I can add to the fill for the earth. So I'm going to go here quickly. Now, as you may have noticed, the grid element is a little bit too high here. We want it lower and the settings of that is actually on the grid element itself. So I'm going to go back to the plan and select every grid element that we have. There we go. Go to the settings using Ctrl T or Command T. And here on the grid element on the second tab, we have the section and elevation settings. So the only thing I need to change here is that right now I'm going from 10,000 on the top and minus 4,000 on the bottom. I'm going to change from four to minus 6,000. Press OK. Let's go back to our section. And that is already looking better. I don't know if you have noticed, but here we have already a dimension for the grid that is in the wrong place. And this is actually on the section settings. So I'm going to right click here, go to the section settings, go all the way to the bottom here on the grid tool. So here we can switch off the grid elements if we don't want to see them, or if we have them on, we can choose to have the dimension lines and add certain level. So I'm going to change here from minus two to 9,000. So those dimension lines are going to go all the way up. One last thing on the section are those levels here on the side. So we're going to go back here, right click section settings, go to the story levels tab. And the way ArchiCAD is doing right now is actually displaying those levels only. They are not going to get printed. If you want them to get printed, you have to change here from display only to display and output. You can also change the line that we have here, or we can switch that line off. So we only have a little extension here on the side, which is preferred. So I'm going to press OK. And there we go. Our section is already looking much better. So going to the plan. So sometimes you're going to have situations where you want to break a section up. So if I click here on this middle point in the pet palette, I have the option to break the section. So I can break the section, change its position. So now I have this symbol on the middle of the section. So I'm going to move this a little bit here. That's better. And let's see how this section looks. There we go. Going back to the plan. Now let's add some elevations. Elevations are exactly the same as section when it comes to editing them. So you're going to have here the name, the ID, if you want to limit. The only difference is that the elevation by standard has the marker head in the middle instead of both at the end, which you can change here. But I don't really want to do that. So you can go ahead, set up the elevation just like we did with the section. Press OK and click on the first and last point of the elevation and choose where you want to look at. So we want to look at the building here. And there we go. If you go to the project navigator here under elevations, you should have our first elevation. So I'm going to double click on it. And there we go. So it needs a lot of setting up, but nothing we don't know how to do. So go ahead and add as many sections as you want for this project and add at least the four elevations.